Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. the group. 
woken up early in the morning after practice on Wednesday and we had sung this day and night, night and day, let incense arise. And as we were praying, I, I, I felt when God woke me up, he said, do we really know what that means? Let incense arise. So I, I looked up the definition for the word incense, an aroma that releases fragrant smoke. And you could stop there, but the last two words are what made it the most meaningful. When burned. An aroma that releases fragrant smoke when burned. At some point in this walk, it doesn't matter how old we are, how long we've been walking with Christ, we have to continually ask him to light the flame of our hearts, to burn deeply in our prayers, to burn a passion within us that releases a fragrance of him, a fragrance of his love, a fragrance of his peace, a fragrance of his joy, that those around us notice a tangible difference in the atmosphere. In the Old Testament, they used incense as an act of worship. But first, the incense must have been set ablaze. So this morning, I want to sing this song again. And I want us to take a minute, no matter where we are in our relationship with God, to say, God, will you light a new fire? Will you burn a new blaze? May I be an aroma to you, noticeable everywhere I go. Oh, Lord, we worship you.
You deserve the glory, King. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, would you just lift your hands and your hearts? Maybe for you it's different and you've not done it before and you just want to give a, an offering of praise by lifting your hands, closing your eyes, whatever that is. Why don't you take a step of faith and stretch and say, Lord Jesus, I'm going on record as being all in for you this morning. You're worthy of my best praise. You're worthy of all of me. I give you all of me this morning, Jesus. With hands extended, my heart lifted to you. My eyes fixed upon you, Jesus. We say, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. to you and we know that you take good care of those things that you own and you take ownership over so God we thank you that you're healing us you're touching our bodies and you're strengthening us Lord you're washing off the weak you're washing off all that darkness and the enemy would want to lay at our hearts door at our mind God wash our minds and wash our hearts clean heal our bodies lift our spirits, God. Waken us. God, come to our bedside and wake anything that's still asleep inside of us spiritually so that, Lord, we will rise in strength and power to be that picture-perfect bride of Christ, that one that is a grand reflection of who you are in everything we say, in everything we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you take a moment to just um, extend a hand towards the people around you? We want to pray for the church this morning. Jesus, we thank you all across this room. We thank you for the people of God. And we ask that you bless our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, that you visit them, that this will be one of the greatest visitations that they'll ever experience today. God, thank you that you're touching them and ministering to them. The things that are on their hearts, God, I pray that you will just begin to lift off any concerns or worries and then begin to pour on hope and confidence and faith in Jesus Christ upon their hearts. Bless our brothers and sisters in Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Praise God. Well, welcome. Welcome on this very cold February morning. Um, tonight, we, you do know that there are two teams playing. Uh, neither one of those teams are, are my teams. Um, I, like, I like them, um, but they're not officially, um, certainly um, I'm sporting Ohio State this morning, um, but um, this is the NFL Super Bowl, and I do believe it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs playing tonight. So um, we're glad you're here. We're going to have a little bit of fun in just a moment. We're glad for those of you that, that came and put on some of your sport paraphernalia. And we've got a couple of prizes we're going to give away in just a moment. But before we do that, we want to wait on you for this morning's tithes and offerings. So um, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. You can see um, how you can give if you're watching us or listening to us online this morning. I know we've been having some um, audio issues with our live stream, so um, if you're hearing this uh, and you can't hear it, then ignore it. But uh, once, you, once that live stream is fixed, we apologize for any difficulties that you might have had. Um, but the ways that you can give is here in person, um, online, by text, and then also by mail. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you're blessing your people, that your hand is on our finances, and that, King, you're blessing the kingdom of God. We give you praise as you bless your people. And God's people said, amen. Thanks for coming to Centerpoint Church. This is CPC in the Know. 
welcome to Super Bowl Sunday. If you're a first-time guest, please make sure you stop back at the welcome desk. There will be a CPC Youth Super Bowl party tonight starting at 6 o'clock. See Pastor Joe for details. February's growth night is Sunday the 21st. We will be having prayer at 5 o'clock and the class Loving Like God starting at 6. The annual business meeting is February 28th at 6 p.m. And if you would like to be a CPC partner and partner with us in the vision God has for CPC, stop back at the welcome desk and get an application. We're glad you joined us at CPC. Welcome home. Praise the Lord. Um, has everybody had an opportunity to pick up one of these? If you did not, you're about to be left out of a, an opportunity to win a couple of cool prizes. So anybody would admit that you, you were late to the ball game and didn't fill one out and you still want to? Okay, well, it's closed. So here we go. We're going we're gonna to start. I'm going to pick two. Uh, Names here, and um, we're going to see who the lucky person is. All right. Is there somebody here named Bill Houston? Does anybody know who Bill, who Bill Houston is? Hey, Bill, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> so you guys can fight over which one it is, um, but we've got it. We've got a special gift for you. And uh, I think Emily's going to run that back to you. All right, go give it up to, for them one more time. I think I think young um, Bill is Bill, and and senior Bill is Billy. Is that correct? All right, that's what I thought. All right, we have one more name here, and it, this must be an all guy event because it's another guy, and his name is Mick Gilmore. Does anybody know who Mick? Gilmore is. <laughs> Congratulations, Mick. There's some snacks uh, to go with your Super Bowl celebration. There's also a gift certificate in there to our local uh, Jersey um, restaurant and, and dairy type queen, whatever we were going to call that. Um, but uh, they're going to be open here in just a few days. So um, uh, you'll be able to t enjoy a, uh, a great meal or a cold uh, treat at Jersey. And we wanted to make sure that we're supporting our local businesses and being a blessing to them. So congratulations, everybody. All right. Hey, Pastor Emily, would you do me a favor? Is I need a bottle of water or a glass of water or something. I put it down someplace. Is that, wh is that where it was? Look, yeah, I said it. I knew I set it down someplace. Has anybody else been doing that? You just walking around the house for like an hour looking for where you put stuff? Am I the only one that's, that has that issue? No. Oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I... I'm looking to see, especially my keys... I'm looking to see if maybe I need to get some kind of tracker on them so I can find them. Thank you, Pastor Emily. I appreciate you getting that water for me. All right, so um, excited about this morning. We're going to take an opportunity to uh, look at the scriptures and uh, talk about what healthy relationships and, and healthy teams look like and why God chooses to work through groups of people. Um, and, and, and I think, you think once we really understand that, we will value the investment that we make um, in ourselves to be uh, a little bit more relation, relationally savvy and relationally righteous. And we will also be a little bit more patient with others uh, because 
there's two things that God tells us that we're supposed to have a great relationship with who? With him, right? And we're supposed to have a great relationship with each other. We're supposed to love God with all of our heart and love our neighbor as ourselves. So this month of February is about healthy relationships, and uh, our key verse, our theme verse for the month is Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Outdo yourselves in honoring one another. Would you say that with me? Ready? Be devoted to one another in love. Outdo yourselves in honoring one another. I wonder what that would look like in your life if you really did that. Um, just even this week, if you put that as a high priority and you were at least 50% more successful than you had been the week before. Healthy relationships and, and healthy teams. You know, um, Ohio has a, a mixed record of when it comes to sports teams. We've got some really good teams mostly at the college level. Ohio State has been excellent for years and years and years. There's almost an expectation that if Ohio State doesn't win big, um, it was a bad game. There's hardly even an expectation that they're going to lose. We just assume we're going to win all the time. Now, growing up in Cleveland, that has never been um, the um, NFL um, expectation for my Cleveland Browns. Um, if somehow or another they are at least close by the fourth quarter, we're all going, they're going to, this is the year, right? Right. Right. And so this year I have to just say that, you know, um, we're on standby in case the chiefs can't play because we almost beat the chiefs in the playoffs. So if the chiefs, something happens, if COVID hits or whatever, I think the Browns are going to jump in there and play Tampa Bay tonight because uh, I just believe that's probably what's going to happen. So um, I'm holding out for, you know, you never know. This is, this is um, let the last part of 2020. You never know what could happen. So, uh, but I, I've been a, a diehard Browns fan. I know we've got at least somebody, and I think you know, he just walked in the room, who is, who is not a Browns fan but is a Steelers fan. And um, there are people on uh, the east side of this state and even people that um, live now. I mean, they, they, they migrated from a foreign country called Pittsburgh and they, they now live in, in central Ohio and they root for the Steelers. And um, I just remember not being fond of the Steelers when I was a little kid, mostly because they beat us up a lot. But um, and then you have the people who are rooting for Cincinnati. And I think... Here we go. There's there's somebody out there crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and you're in the middle part of the state, the south part of the state, and Cincinnati kind of suffers a little bit from the same thing the Browns do. Is um, you never know um, how good they're going to be. So, anyways, healthy teams um, sometimes are few and far between, and the two teams that are playing tonight are led by two very different. Um, quarterbacks. Kansas City Chiefs are being led by Patrick Mahomes. He's a young guy. He's an up-and-coming um, NFL star quarterback. And um, on the other side of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, Tom Brady, who put, prayed, prayed and played for the uh, uh, New England Patriots for years and years and years, is, is now uh, leading the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and it took them right to the Super Bowl. So He's 40-something, and Mahomes is just a kid. I think he might be 12 or 13 years old still. Um, so it's going to be a great um, game against, you know, the, the classic, one of the best against one of the up-and-coming. And, um, you know, what, what, does it, what does it take to make a good team? Um, a couple quotes, and we're going to get into Scripture here in a second, but because I think, I think there's so many principles that are played out in our everyday lives that reflect the importance of relationships. And we see that Kansas City and Tampa Bay are not getting uh, to the Super Bowl tonight with one person um, pulling the weight. It's a, it is a, a team effort. Um, a safety for the Kansas City Chiefs um, 
said buying into each other throughout the week was crucial to the win. It's all about team, man, Lafew said. As long as we stay committed to the team, as long as we stay committed to our process, continuing to trust our coaches and, and um, believe in those guys, everything else will take care of itself. And he tweeted, nothing more important than team. We also know that um, Patrick Mahomes has a, a relationship with Christ. At least that's uh, what, what he professes and oftentimes gives opportunities to give praise and thanks to God for uh, what God is doing in his life and recognizes the importance of um, his teammates bringing him to the place that he is at. There's an article that was written about teams, and there's a lot of articles written um, that probably would say very similar things. But five attributes um, all winning teams share. They share vision. Um, they're engaged. They collaborate. They're diverse. And they're respectful. I think those five attributes can really help us understand um, how we as a group of people, the family of Christ, um, engage with one another and are successful in honoring what God's called us to do. Our attitude as believers, again, Romans 12, 10, is to be devoted to one another in love, to outdo ourselves in honoring each other. As we are a part of the greatest team ever, the team that Jesus is assembling, to do some very significant things. One is to bring more of heaven to earth while we're here. Um, to eventually usher in the kingdom of God. Do you, do you know that Jesus is coming to set up his kingdom? He's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And that, that moment is getting closer and closer and closer and closer. So he's preparing a group of people. He's preparing a team, so to speak, a family, um, to make a difference on earth to set the stage to prepare for his ultimate rulership on earth and for all of eternity so that the entire universe um, is going to be blessed by what he does through you and me. And I think that's critical that we understand that God's doing something through us and that our attitude about that has got to be built around a relationship with Christ and a relationship with each other. We need to be devoted to one another in love and to outdo ourselves in honoring each other. And our, 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 the reason we do that is because the mission that God's called us to, the end of the reason he's, he's brought us together as a family, the reason he's pulled us together as a team is for redemption and transformation. He's called you to be redeemed and you to be transformed. And he's called you to help others be redeemed and transformed. I need, on a daily basis, to be redeemed. And I think this is a critical piece to understanding how to have a successful team when it comes to serving in the body of Christ and being a part of the family of God. Redemption means that something's lost. When I look in the mirror, I, I don't want to stay too long on that, but I need to remember that I was once lost. There's parts of me still that are, that are lost and are broken and need to be redeemed. God has come to rescue me. God has come to redeem me. God has come to do a work inside of me. And that's, the, not only is that the case with me, but that's the case with every one of you sitting here this morning. We're not perfect. We're a work in progress. And before Jesus came, we were a wreck. We had to be redeemed. We were so bad off that Jesus left heaven, came to earth, suffered and bled and died on a cross so that we might be redeemed. I think that's important to understand because sometimes we really don't realize how broken humanity is and how difficult it is for God to do this type of work of redemption and transformation through humanity that's broken. 
humanity that needs to be redeemed and transformed. So when you first gave your heart and life to Jesus Christ, if you've had the pleasure of doing that, um, you recognized your brokenness. The reason you came to Christ was because there was a uh, understanding that there was something missing in your life and you came to Jesus and Jesus came into your life and, and for some of us, we think Jesus fixed us. And praise the Lord, he's redeeming us, he's transforming us, he's working on us. But it's really easy that once we give our lives to the Lord and start this journey, we begin to forget how um, messed up we were before Jesus came. And oftentimes, as patient as everybody is with us, until we get to that point of redemption and salvation, as soon as we reach it, we get very impatient with everybody that's still um, on their way into the family of God. And we, we've got to recognize that humanity is broken. That's why humanity needs to be redeemed. And every day I am being redeemed and every day I am being transformed. And every day I am gathered around both people who are saved and people who are unsaved. People who are part of the family of God, people who are not part of the family of God. I'm surrounded by people that need to be redeemed and need to be transformed. Nobody is perfected yet. Jesus is the perfecter of our faith, and we're on the, in that process. But God still, here's the good news, is even though that picture is a little bleak, if you think about it, for a, Jesus has chosen to redeem the world and transform the world through us, through a broken team. Um, Sometimes we learn the most about teamwork and relationships when we're not winning. Um, it's one thing to look at the Chiefs and say, wow, they're there, but they've got a story, just like the Browns have a story, just like the Bengals have a story, just like the Steelers have a story, just like Tampa Bay has a story, just like you have a story. Um, the process, the brokenness, the, 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 the transformation process is is important to understand how we get to be a good team. And I, I want to take a moment to, to remind some of you, maybe introduce some of you to a story that is in the Old Testament concerning Moses and the people of Israel. And this, this takes place right after they had one of their greatest victories ever. It was kind of like um, they'd been losing, losing, losing. They'd been in... in, in uh, serving Egypt as slaves for 400 years. And God heard their cries and sent a deliverer in, the, in, the, uh, in a man called Moses. And Moses led them out with their pockets full of Egyptian gold, led them out of slavery and had them headed to a new land that God promised to give them. This is on the heels of one of the greatest um, victories that Team Moses ever had. And so they are now, um, in Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, set to check out their new homes. They didn't have a home. They built homes for strangers for 400 years. And now God was taking them to a place where they would have their own homes and their own land, and they would be a people called for God. The Lord said to Moses, Send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I'm giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 tribes. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and he sent out 12 men, all tribal leaders of Israel, from their camp in the wilderness of Paran. And then jumping down to verse 17. Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out. Go north into the hill country. See what the land is like. Find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or bad? Do they have towns? Do, do their towns have walls? Or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile? Is it poor? Are there many trees? And 
And then verse 20. Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. It happened to be the season for harvesting grapes. And so they went up and explored the land. Going north, they arrived at Hebron, where the descendants of Anak lived. When they came to the valley of Eskel, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. I've eaten a lot of grapes, but I've never eaten grapes that big. That's, that's, that's some serious grapes right there. They also brought back samples of pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eskel, which means cluster, because of the cluster of grapes the Israelite men cut there. Verse 25. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel. And they reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. And this was the report, their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. And I'm sure they're showing them the samples that they brought home. But the people there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. Now Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with them disagreed. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. They spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. Even, we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought, too. Verse 14, chapter 14, verse 1. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. So let me ask you a question. How would you like to be, about, be a part of that team that day? <laughs> this is the team, uh, Team Moses, that God has put his blessing on to change the world. Let that sink in for a minute. Let me say that again. This is the team. <laughs> Team Moses, that God has put his blessing on, and he's going to work through them to change the world. God, what are you doing, right? Um, God has a track record for gathering groups of people together who aren't ready to win. Um, help them realize how unprepared they are to win and transform them, redeem them, and bring them to a place that they can go in and occupy the victory that God has called them to occupy. I don't know about you, but I would think that that would have been a hard day for leader Moses. I think that would have been a hard, um, it actually ended up being 40 years of a wait for the team to come together and be able to accomplish what at the beginning of chapter 13 God had promised them is I'm sending you into the land for you to take it. Um, 
there's, there's some things, that's it, lessons that we can, we can learn from this. Uh, understand that in life, um, we're affected by others. It's unavoidable. It is an unavoidable, you just, you need to let, you just need to let that get in and, and deal with that, first of all is in life we are affected by others. It's unavoidable. And sometimes we're, people do great things and we're excited about it and, and we ride on their coattails. And then other times they do stupid things and, and we are in the smoke and the exhaust of the failures and all the stuff that happens. But we're affected. And, and to recognize and understand that God knows that and that's the reality but God is still choosing people and putting them together for a purpose to accomplish things that that group of people could never do without the power and the blessing of God. Israel eventually, if you can read it, read the book of Joshua. Um, Numbers doesn't tell the greatest story about Israel's history, but Joshua finally gets a winning team. And Israel wins, 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 all the way through the book of Joshua. So if you like to read about winning teams, that, that's a good one uh, to read about. But God did not give up on that group of people. He hung with them until they had changed and their mindsets had changed and they had gelled together as a group so that they could occupy the land and to move into the homes that God had given them. I think the other thing that we were reminded of, and I'm doing this on purpose, is remember your attitude. You need to understand that um, we're affected by what other people do. But again, repeating it for the third time, your attitude. Your attitude is critical. Be devoted to one another in love. Outdo yourselves in honoring one another. And and what? why are we Devoted to each other in love, what are we outdoing one another to do? To, to redeem and transform. To be redeemed, I need, because Michelle is in this room, Gail is in this room, Mick is in this room, Zane is in this room. Whatever I do is going to affect them because we're in relationship with each other. We know each other. There's it may not be a huge effect, but there's going to be some kind of an effect on, on what I need to do. I owe it to those people I just named to be redeemed. I need to be working on Brent to be as redeemed as possible and to be transformed as possible. Because the more I'm redeemed and like Jesus, the more I'm transformed, the more I am um, more righteous in my relationships with people, the more of a blessing I'm going to be to them. The more they're going to be able to be, you know, it's sometimes it's easier to be redeemed and transformed around people who want to be redeemed and transformed. It's hard to win when you're around people who lose all the time. It's hard to be redeemed when you're around people who send their brains out all the time. It's hard to love each other when you're around people who gripe about each other all the time. So we, we owe it. I owe it to you. You owe it to me to be working on you. You need Jesus to redeem you and transform you for the sake of the mission that God's called us to. I need to be redeemed and transformed. It's outlined in the great commandment. We're supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. I think that would encompass all of that. In order for that to happen, I need to be redeemed and I need to be transformed. Because there's sometimes that, you know, I say, you know what, I think I finally really love Gordy. And then Gordy goes and does something else. And then I'm like, I'm being tested. Do I really love him now? <laughs> you know? And that's what relationships are about, right? It's, it's always that, that transforming, redeeming process um, we're called to make disciples. We're called to come alongside and get in people's lives and help them to be transformed. And we're called to go back and get the stragglers who aren't there where we're at yet 
the people who aren't serving Jesus were called to go to, to them and be patient and kind and bring redemption and transformation to their lives. And that's not going to happen unless I'm allowing God to redeem and transform me and that I am committed to the process of redemption and transformation. So let me, let me say one more thing about that. If I'm committed to the process of redemption and transformation, that means I cannot be a perfectionist. That means I cannot have expectations that cause me to give up on Gordy when he disappoints me. Gordy's going to disappoint me. I'm going to disappoint Gordon. That's, that's baked in the cookies. If you think you came to church and people are not going to disappoint you, you, you forgot what a team is about. You forgot about the need. I guess you don't think we're still in the redemption transformation process. We're working together to redeem and transform people. And so I've got, not, not in a bad expectation, I don't want Gordy to fail, but I've got to expect that Gordy's going to struggle sometimes, just like he needs to expect that I'm going to struggle. Well, he's the pastor. The pastors never struggle. Pastor Doug, I have confession. I know you're a, you're a counselor and a chaplain and everything, but Pastor Doug, there's sometimes I struggle. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I know no one else thinks that, but I have days. I have days that I wish I could take back. I say things that I wish I hadn't said. And in this process of redemption and transformation, we all together, if we're going to actually make a difference in Marion, if we're actually going to see lives redeemed and transformed, we're going to have to be patient with the team God's given us. This motley crew at times, right? Sometimes it's a great crew, but sometimes it's a motley crew. Just be glad that we're not that group that Moses had, right? I mean, there's always perspective involved. So we also need to believe some things. We need to believe in God. You say, check, I've done that. So did Israel. We believe in God. He's our hero. He brought us out of Egypt. Did you see what he did to them dirty Egyptians? Man, he rained all kinds of havoc on them. Woohoo! we win. Look, you see the gold we got? We like Jesus. I'm not going into that land with giants. I don't care what God says. I don't care what God tells us. There's no way I'm going to do that. See, our belief in God can't be circumstantial. It has to be complete. And if, if you only believe God up until the point where you can believe that he's going to be honest and, and faithful with you, then I don't know how deep your belief is. And you need to recognize that you're being redeemed and transformed. So almost every day as you're being changed and transformed, guess what? You're going to believe God for greater things. You're going to have to be transformed in your understanding of how good and faithful God is. And so when we reach that point of, oh, there's giants in the land. Oh, there's a huge problem around us, what are you going to do? I believe God is bigger than the giants. And I don't know how the giants are going to get taken care of, but right now all I know is I believe what God says. We also need to believe in the mission. We need to believe that he's transforming us and he's redeeming us. He's going to help us bring people to Christ. We also need to believe that God accomplishes his mission through his team. There are some things, church, and I would say most things, are accomplished through, his, through God's team than through individuals. There's so much that we fail to realize in our own lives because of our failure to be a part, to work towards being a winning team for Jesus, to be a part of Team Jesus that, that makes an impact, a strong impact on the world. What does mission success look like? Tonight, if you watch the Super Bowl, 
Um, some of you may be tuning in for the first time. Anybody going to watch the Super Bowl for the first time in their life? Anybody? It's, you're going to tune in. Anybody going to not watch it for the first time in your life? Anybody tune in out? Got some, we got some tuner routers. Okay. Um, how many of you are going to get mad if your team doesn't win? Anybody, anybody there? We got a couple honest people. Won't be able to go to sleep tonight. They'll be depressed that their team doesn't win. All, all of us are, are looking at that. It's going to be evident by the score at the end of the game that somebody won and someone lost. Sometimes when we're talking about Team Jesus, it's a little bit more difficult to know if we've won or lost because we're still in the midst of the game. We're still in the midst of the process. What does mission success look like? What does it look like to win with Team Jesus? We need an unwavering commitment to redemption and transformation. I know that sounds repetitive, but mission success is continuing to be redeemed and continuing to grow. As long as you are being redeemed and growing and investing in others to redeem and grow, that is mission success. That is a winning team. That's what it looks like. We're going to have times where there's giants. We're going to have times when COVID kicks uh, everything to the curb and, and we struggle. There's going to be times when, when we struggle in our relationships, in our families, with our marriages and with our kids and um, with, with, in our community. We're going to struggle. But if we're committed to be changed, to be redeemed and committed to that process in other people, that's how we know we're going to win. So I want to share with you um, one more time an encouraging word for Team Ohio. There, uh, there is a uh, group of churches in Ohio in the Assemblies of God that um, God is anointing and putting his hand upon to accomplish great things. I believe that uh, God wants to see one of the greatest end time evangelistic efforts ever seen by the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe God is touching the church in Ohio, his family, to be a part of that. And a team for, in the concept of, of, of in relationship with Jesus is, is always a family. We are the family of Christ. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And God chooses to work in the midst of family to redeem us, to transform us, to work in us and through us to accomplish amazing things. And so all that's been happening, God says, I'm unifying you for what's about to come. I'm sending angels to oversee you. I'm opening streams in the desert for a new breakthrough of growth, new life. I'm sending a great light in the darkness. It will pierce the darkness. No weapon forged against you will prosper. I'm changing the way you think. I am doing a new thing. I'm destroying the yoke, the yoke that is on you and your family. I'm breaking the fear of man. It has to go. Chains are coming off. Warriors rise. I will cover you for I am the God of victory, not defeat. I'm calling everyone from the north, south, east, and west. And Leah, if you'll come, I will give you clarity on what to do and what to say. I am still king. I am still king. I am still king. The enemy has been defeated. My foot has crushed his head. Again, I tell you, no weapon forged against you will prosper. I will cover the earth with my glory, and you do not need to be afraid. I will be with you. I will anoint you. I will empower you. And I will give you the words to say. And you will not be empty or dry. My power is made perfect in your weakness. I'm warring against unbelief. So believe in me. I go before you. I go behind you. There is no need to fear. The battle is already won. I am the great. I am. Would you stand with me?
God's made us, knitted us, knitted us together in, in an assortment of thoughts and feelings. We have a mind, we have emotions, we have a body, we have memories, we have hopes and dreams of the future. That's, that's who we are. And we try to interpret what is taking place in our world and what God is doing through those lenses. But remember, those lenses, your mind is a lens, your emotions are a lens, your body is a lens, your past, your hopes, your dreams are all still in the process of being redeemed. And so sometimes teams, families, in order to win, have to push past and recognize that we can't always trust our minds. We can't always trust our emotions. We can't always trust our bodies. We can't always trust the past or the future or our hopes and dreams. We can't always trust other people. We can't always trust what, what is happening in the world around us. We're affected. We said that. It's unavoidable. We're affected by the people around us. But there's one thing that winning teams always do. They believe that what God said is true and he's going to do it. So it doesn't matter if I feel that this morning or think that this morning or have a past record track history of it. The truth is the truth. And right off the top, what do we need to believe? We need to believe in God. We need to believe that in his mission, that he is redeeming me and he is transforming me. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you feel or think. There's a, there's a redemption there. And what happens is, is, is I rise up in my spirit you see, there's a part of us that's, that's spiritual, that's still being transformed and is growing. Some of our spiritual men or persons inside of us are about this tall, and our heads are this tall, and our emotions are this tall, but our spirit needs to be leading the way, and instead of being led by our spirit, we're being led by our heads or our hearts or by our past or by people. What God's calling you to do is to just be obedient. God said, go into the land and check out what I'm about to give you. And then wait for my orders. I'm sending you in to take care of it. Regardless of what we see, regardless of what life throws at us, we've got to come back to the point. God said, he's given us the land. God said that he's redeeming me. God said he's transforming me. God said that there's a church at 2303 Marion Mount Gilead Road in Marion, Ohio called Center Point Church that God has put his hand on to redeem, transform, and to be used to redeem and transform this community. That is a fact, and that's never going to change because that's his mission. And so... I, I believe God. I believe that he's going to use you. He's going to use me. Of all the people in the world, you guys thought that when you invited Pastor Brent to come be your pastor two years ago that I was going to have all the answers and fix it, right? And you found out that he didn't know what to do for a year when COVID hit. He's just like, oh my gosh, where's, where, what are we doing? And that's where, where we all feel right now. We all are feeling how critically inadequate we are at this spiritual task, but God still has chosen me and you, and he wants to use us. Do you know why? Because he wants to use a team that the world and the enemy would say maybe is not the best team in the world, or even they would like to label the church in America as a losing team, that the church in America is losing God wants to take what the enemy has said it will never make a difference, and he wants to prove the enemy wrong with the very people that the enemy is accusing of being worthless, losers, never going to amount to anything. And so God has positioned himself in the midst of an imperfect people to use us and show us off to the devil because he wants to show the devil 
how much he can change and make a difference in our lives because we're all giant killers and we're all winners. And regardless of who wins tonight, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven wins and it's already won. The enemy's been defeated. My foot has crushed his head. Jesus is coming, setting up his kingdom for a thousand years very soon. That's coming whether we believe it or not, it's coming. So we've already won. He just wants us to get to the promised land and begin to enter into what God has us to do. So would you bow your hearts with me? All across this room, you'd say, you know what? I am surrendering this morning in a deeper way to the redemption and transformation in my own life. And you just, by a lifted hand, say, yes, that's me. I am surrendering to the work of the Holy Spirit to redeem me and transform me. Thank you. Thank you. Bless us, God. Bless us and use us. And now one more time, all across this room, you're saying, I'm surrendering to work with imperfect people like me who need to be redeemed and transformed. I will invest in the people that God's put on my team, the people God's put in my life, the people God's put in my family to help them be redeemed and help them be transformed. And you say, I know that's a little bit more harder of a difficult, a difficult commitment, but you're willing to make that. I raise my hand and say, Jesus, yes, help me now. I'm committed to the mission because that's what it's about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are the everlasting, everlasting name above all. Jesus, you are the everlasting, everlasting name above all. Jesus, you are the ever, come on, sing it out. The everlasting name above all, Jesus, you are the everlasting, everlasting name above all, Jesus, you are. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All across this room, can we just praise him? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're working in us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we've got the best coach in the universe. We've got the best leader ever. King Jesus is leading this team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our victory is certain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, everlasting. As always, the altars are open. You feel free to find a place and pray either at your seat or come to the altars. If you need to slip out or get your kids, we certainly understand that. But God bless you. Um, I'm so thankful to be a part of a group of people who are committed to each other and committed to the task that God's given us. And I just want to say, speak that over your lives. You're winners. You're winners, you're redeemed, you're redeemers, you're transformed, you're transformers. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a great, great Sunday. You are the one who knows my need before I call. You tell the storm when it will see. searches deep within my heart. The highest praise cannot proclaim how great you are. There is none like you, none like you. Oh, faithful one, Jesus. There is
there's none like you, none like you. I'm thankful I'm Jesus, no sacrifice can now repay the debt I owe. For earn this gift of righteousness. Your own. Still, I will give myself away to make you known. The name above all other names is yours alone. There is none like you, none like you. There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. Good. 